I, uh, what was it? <laughs> I stole his crossbow, and I knew he was an extraordinarily volatile person. He was a, a half-orc, uh, fucking paladin of Groomsh. Groomsh is evil. Um, oh, God. Yeah. And so... Mid box. Um... I, I stole his crossbow from him because my character uh, was three whites and blue. kind of like a rogue. And I was chaotic. <laughs> and so then I'm like, okay, I gotta plant this on somebody. I got a purple, two blues, and a white. And the blue was gold, and the purple was a shot put. Oh, I like shot put. I still like the uh, uh, ultimate one better. <laughs> Um, any of then. I knew he was really volatile, and I really didn't like this other player. So I stole the thing, and I was gonna plant it on the other player, and then I couldn't, like, get him alone in a way that I could drop it on him, uh, before the paladin discovered that he'd had his item stolen from him, and he immediately goes on a tirade trying to figure out who stole his freaking crossbow. <laughs> And I'm sitting there with the crossbow in my bag of holding, uh, going, I don't know, uh, did you ask the new guy? <laughs> and so he asks the new guy, he says, you stole my crossbow, didn't you? And the other guy goes, no. It's like, well, show me what's inside your bag. I don't believe you. And the other, and I'm, so, I'm like, fuck, jigs up. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do now. The guy goes, no, I don't have to show you what's inside my bag. It's my bag. <laughs> So he becomes convinced that the guy stole his crossbow. And he keeps hounding him about it. Thankfully for, like, the next two in-game days, or, like, through the night into the next day. And the whole time I'm just trying to get this guy somewhere where I can make a roll to slip the crossbow into his bag. And he's just it's just not happening, you know? He's just not going anywhere that I can do it undetected. And so finally, on like, I, I get desperate, and I, and I like, start an argument with him. And so we're, like, getting in each other's face, yelling at each other, and then I, like, I shove him, and I walk through a doorway, but I sleight of hand at the moment that I, that I push him against the wall, and I slipped it into his bag at that moment, and no one noticed! And so finally... Tensions just keep mounting with this guy. Nobody trusts him. Nobody likes him. Uh, he keeps making really weird decisions, trying to get the party to stop doing what it's doing, start doing something else, it's investigating weird things that we don't understand, telling us we're wrong about shit. You know, nobody likes. Him. He's just not making friends. And finally, he pisses off uh, another character uh, to the point that that character uh, wants to fight him. And. Uh, and in the middle of that fight, I join in because I'm like, cool, I'll, I'll do this. I'll, I'll, I'll take him down. I don't like this guy anyway. I don't trust him. He's he's jeopardizing our mission to save the world. <laughs> so we're fighting him. And in the middle of the fight, the paladin comes over because he starts asking for help now that he's fighting two people. He's like, hey, are you guys really just going to let these guys kill me? This is bullshit. The paladin says, hey, I'll help you. I don't care who I fight for as long as the world gets saved, but I want to know what's in your bag because I think you stole my crossbow. The guy fed up goes, fine, look, it's not in my crossbow, and dumps his bag of holding out on the ground. <laughs> and out tumbles the crossbow. <laughs> At which point the paladin just smirks and goes, uh-huh. Kills him on the spot and beheads his corpse. That was awesome. Awesome. I tried to hook this Metro, but I hooked the McCree instead. Oh, did you kill the McCree? The McCree is dead, yeah. Did you kill and the then Symmetra? I got dead. No, the Symmetra is not dead. Did she kill you? The Symmetra and the Bastion together sort of do a lot of damage. Yeah, that's 
So, um, so that was a pretty, pretty fun moment. Um, I started with that character in three five, uh, and he was a uh, black guard. Um, I've come back to him a few times over a few different games, and the last time I played him, uh, I basically decided, well, he's really just sort of transformed by all of his experiences trying to save the world, um, and succeeding in saving the world once. Um, he, he started off as a legitimate paladin, uh, and... Uh, kind of wanted to go back to being that guy. Well, that sucks for me. <clears throat> Torbjorn appeared next to me, threw down a turret, and went, okay, I can kill that, and then fucking Winston Shield went up and protected it. You're like, well then, it would seem we're at an impasse. No, it seems like I'm, like I'm at an impasse, and they are victorious. And, um, so I created him as a as a lawful good paladin, uh, and he, uh, you know, he had been working for the protection of his his, his family and his kingdom. Um, and, you know, was a, a leader, uh, you know, always taking on leadership type roles. Uh, you know, leading um, uh, squads in the army and training training new soldiers and things like that. And, uh, and finally his, his hometown is being attacked by this, um, uh, evil warlock. And, uh, evil warlock's just freaking unstoppable. Um, so he, he leads, you know, the, the city's army out to fight this, uh, warlock and, uh, you know, over a long campaign, everybody is is dying. He's losing men left and right. The warlock is losing its army that it created with magic left and right. Um, but finally, I thought you were gonna say the warlock is losing his patience. Oh man! You know, he's let a tracer get behind us, and it killed me. I hate that. Whenever I'm Tracer and I go after their 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 healer, their whole team turns on me and kills me before I can. Kind of figured when I powered up the Winston, yeah. he would kill the Tracer that no. was zipping around. It turned out no, he just didn't do anything. And so, in the end, it comes down. You know, after days and weeks of of warfare of, of combat. The the warlock's army is pretty much expended, uh, and it's just him and my paladin, <laughs> like grudge matching. This is not working. Um, uh, it's it's like one on one, days and days until it's just my paladin left. And finally, he offers this awful deal, because he's an awful, awful person. He says, okay, here's here's how it's going to be. I, I respect you, right? <laughs> I respect you. Um, I will fuck you! Fucking bullshit, Genji. I will spare your life and the lives of your, everyone you know and love. I will cease all of my attacks on your city and all of my designs to, to take down your king and country and everything uh, if you agree to serve me. And my character is like, why should I trust you? <laughs> It's like, well, I mean, you don't have to trust me. You don't have much choice, uh, because you're at your, you know, limit. And I have magic. <laughs> and besides, think of the deal you're getting. You'll save your kingdom, finally, and all it'll cost is you. You must serve me. 
uh, and and some of my characters like tentatively like okay, uh, I don't really trust you. It's like look, here's here's how it's gonna work. To be honest with you, I get to attack you, Sadie, one more time with a monster of my choosing at a time of my choosing, but you will get to know about it during the time that you serve me, and you'll be right here. If you really, if I break my word, you'll be able to do something about it. <laughs> right. So my character agrees. And begins serving him in the Underdark to protect his kingdom. All the attacks stop. The armies are busy doing other things in the Underdark to serve him, not attacking my character's kingdom. For years. And, then, and all the time, the question on my character's lips for this warlock is, so... When is your final attack? What What is your last monster that you're going to send? What is... What's the deal? Come on, you told me you, you promised you would... That I would get to know and see the result of this attack. And, and, and that was part of our deal. And, uh... Over the several years he spends in the Underdark doing errands and serving this guy, he's bottling up and twisting and and just anything to to protect him you know you have to self protect self preservation you had to become the underdark in order to survive the underdark you know dealing with all these foul creatures all the time and so the way that was my backstory explanation for how he became he was a 12th level paladin he became a 10th level blackguard um, where he, tr he traded out his levels of paladin for levels of blackguard as he fell from grace and this was the real victory for the warlock was causing this righteous paladin to fall um, not that, that my character would ever understand that and uh, so after three years he's finally sent out on his latest mission, which is to infiltrate a particular organization and, and set up, uh, establish a power base uh, for the warlock within it, which is this ancient magic... Fuck you! Are you fucking kidding me? And I'm dead. There you go. That's how he became a fallen paladin and became evil. So after all that, we brought him into 5th edition. I decided all of this, going through all this, he wants... He's really struggling against himself. He doesn't want to be that guy anymore. He wants to be a good guy again. And the party, of course, had somebody who was not actually working toward the party's, the rest of the party's goal. <laughs> um, and my character, I, I went in and, and stuff started getting described to me. I'm like, yeah, well, this is obvious that he's lying to everybody and he knows what's really going on. Um, I tried to tell them I had several sessions of actual, uh, in-character debate with them, explaining all the reasons I knew this guy was lying to them and, and trying to make the mission fail. I, I hit my button so that I wouldn't freeze, and I still froze. And that's why I couldn't hit the button to not freeze. I got stunned at the exact moment I hit it. And so suddenly he's not going around threatening people, murdering people, stealing things, because, you know, he knows that's not how he wants to do things. And so suddenly he's debating and trying to convince them, look, this guy's lying, he's a danger, uh, everything he's told you so far 
is untrue, and he knows it. This isn't like he's accidentally giving you bad information just because he doesn't know a thing. He's he's actually manipulating you, <laughs> and the party's like, why should we believe you? Okay. Uh, I, I finally uh, said, look, at least he's got this construct with him, this golem. We should at least, like... I don't trust him. For some reason, you trust him. Let's at least remove the golem from the equation, because we're probably going to end up fighting him, and at least then he won't have an advantage by having this golem with undead. Of course. Heroes never die. Where is this fucker? Which fucker? Rollmaster76. We killed him. Good. Um, they just, uh, they wouldn't listen. No matter what I said to them, it was never convincing enough. And, uh... Like, I, and it was really annoying, because we would have these, like, debate sessions where it was me presenting arguments, them presenting counter-arguments, and they would start to see it my way. They'd be like, I guess you know they're right. You know, that is kind of suspicious, la 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 la. And finally, it was like, I was like, well, look, I'm going to take out the golem. Um, I really, you know, I think we should take out the golem. They're like, look, you can take out the golem. We won't stop you, but we're not going to help you because we don't really trust you. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take out the golem. And and then they'd be like, no, we don't want you to take out the golem. We don't. We never agreed to that. It's like, no, you ju literally just said. You literally just said that's what you're going to do. That's right. Use my ult on a turret. So I finally just said, fine, forget you guys. Look, this he's evil, he's lying to you, and he's gonna get us all killed, and he's gonna get the world end, and you have no proof. I'm like, I'm killing this, this golem. So I, I initiated combat with the golem, and immediately the people who were like, oh, fine, if you want to kill it, you can kill it, we're not helping you, <laughs> um, decide that I shouldn't be allowed to kill it <laughs> and start fighting me. And I I think I hit the golem with one attack, and then they grappled me and drag, dragged me away from it. And the golem walked after them as they dragged me away and started punching me in the face. So I, I spent the whole fight just, like, in their grapple. I didn't even bother breaking the grapple because you can attack while you're grappled. And no, it does not impart um, uh, disadvantage. I think you were talking about disadvantage when grappling a thing. Oh, I got a gold. Nice. It's the Zarya champion, which I don't care about, but it's a gold. Um, so they grappled me and, and, and were attacking me. Like, one of them grappled me and the other one's punching me. And the golem's punching me. <laughs> and I'm literally ignoring everything they're doing, like, mentally just ignoring it and I just continue attacking the golem and I managed to survive the entire onslaught from three enemies effectively um, and destroy the golem <laughs> at which one I'm like alright we're done here golem's done how they go and they try to like tell me to give them my weapons and everything like that I'm like um no <laughs> just Look, we're, it's done. It's over. We're good. That's all I needed to do, because this guy is going to betray us, okay? And he was going to use the golem to do it. And they continued punching me. <laughs> and I had put my weapon away, and I was just sitting there in the gravel. They kept, like, not, like tripping me and then punching me while I'm laying on the ground. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Stop. The GM was like... What are you guys doing to him? Like, he's not giving us his weapon. It's like, he's not fighting you either. Like, you're literally stabbing him while he's laying on the ground, and he's just staring at you, wondering when you're gonna stop. 
<laughs> it was seriously disturbing. Um, wow, that didn't go well. I, I got doom fisted. Uh, eventually, they got bored of punching me because I wasn't dying. <laughs> Uh, because I had, um, a lot of health. Uh, I think we were, like, 15th level or something. And I had, um, like, a healing spell or two left that I was using. <laughs> like, and I wasn't doing... I was literally not doing anything. In their grip. Oh, are you kidding me? Of course. And she comes after me and me alone. Dumbest idea I've ever heard people try and do in an RPG. <sighs> it had to be that time I had a party uh, go in and, and murder an entire temple devoted to a particular god. Uh, and then try and cover it up by making it look like necromancers did it. Yeah, they totally should <laughs> Should have just been that it was the, that they the uh, priests were the necromancers. <laughs> it would have looked so much better. I don't think they would have gotten away with that realistically because the priests were well known to everybody for years. Yeah, but they could have felt better about their souls. I mean, they wouldn't be have needed to butcher everyone. And Necromancers can play the long con. I've had a few do it. And I'm a good old man. Headshot, of course. <laughs> That's a lot of a lot of guys. Why am I dead? He, he looks rocked at me as I teleported. Um, that was a good one. Um, what was another one? Uh, I had figured out a puzzle in uh, the 3-5 game when I was playing Chaotic Evil, and it was too... Uh, all you had to do was like there was a magic a magically locked door that would unlock if a minotaur stood in front of it and it did like a retinal scan like a magic retinal scan on them and uh so we had killed one of these minotaur and uh i <laughs> I, I I played it to uh, the the character was with me as I didn't know what the solution was. Uh, we should just try taking all the bits of the Minotaur over to the door and trying them on it. Like, because obviously, like you, you use your hands to push doors open, so we should grab the Minotaur hands and like push them against the door. So we I had this character who was a druid butcher this Minotaur <laughs> and then take it bit by bit over to the door to try the different bits on it. <laughs> I hope you're happy with your decision, Roadhog. That was dangerous. Oh, 
Okay, I'm fucking hurt. I could use some help. Nope. Okay. There's a Torbjorn turret above the point that needs to go down. Except that now it can't. And the Torbjorn is on the point. And uh, nobody's contesting him. I was kind of hoping that there were other people around and my ult would just, you know, distract him for someone else to come in and finish him, and then that didn't nope. happen. because there was still one person on the point. The fucking Winston. I had this druid butchering the minotaur and pushing its different limbs up against the door. <laughs> and, and finally we get to the head, and as soon as he holds up, I'm like, I don't know, that's the last piece, but what the fuck would this do? And then, <laughs> then it, like, magical retinal scans the head and opens it, like, oh. Okay. Well. And the druid just looks at me like, you know, eyes was in the puzzle. Would have made sense to use the head, maybe. And you're first. like, what? <laughs> I was like, huh. You know, in retrospect, that does make a lot of sense. <laughs> and uh, and then I took all the bits of of uh, Minotaur bloody gory chunks and. Um, Stuffed them into everybody's bag that night. <laughs> so all of their items were covered in blood. That was not a nice person. That was chaotic evil. They never figured out it was me who did it either. <laughs> they were they they were convinced. <laughs> they were convinced that they were being followed around by some magical goblin or something, the gremlins that were fucking with them the whole time. I'm like, yes, gremlins. <laughs> Damn them. They're awful. It's, this place is infested with them. Keep your eyes out. You might spot one and then we can stop this nonsense. <laughs> But no, I, I managed to kill the golem as my character did his rough transformation from evil back to good. Uh, and then I got to the to the end and they still couldn't be convinced that the dude was lying to them. And, you know, the finally we got to the point where someone is sacrificed and a wish is made. And they're like, he can't be evil, he wants to sacrifice himself for the wish. I'm like, you, he can die making the wish and still get exactly what he wants. They, they didn't get it. <laughs> and I'm sad because there was a moment in there where I could have unraveled his entire plan with a simple action, but my character was so disenchanted with everything that was going on that I just... It, the moment slipped by. <laughs> and so he, he got to do his plan, he stabbed himself, he made his wish, and he wished that the world would... would, would belonged to the elder god that he secretly served and the world was destroyed and all of us were killed <laughs> at the very last moment as the elder god rises from the abyss and holds us in his grip before crushing us to death the one of them who, who had tried beating me to death earlier looks at me and says i'm sorry <laughs> we should have believed you they have a Widowmaker. I know. Okay. I'm, I'm dealing with the point problem. Can I 
And I hit my increased healing and died. There's a May on the point. We got her. Okay. Has anybody dealt with that uh, Widowmaker? No. Okay, so she's still running around above the point. Fuck, I missed her. So, that character had survived so much along that storyline, which spanned from 3.5 into 4th edition into 5th edition, only to die to this character in the party uh, who destroyed the world. <laughs> nice hack, by the by the way. Yep, I, I was I was happy with that. They were just a little bit too. They should have shot before. Um, yeah, before transform or before. Uh, wait, yeah. Did they transform or because they were they, trying to they move? were about to, they were trying to transform and I started hacking before they started to transform. So if they had shot me to stop the hack, then I think they could have made it. Stayed with you. Thank you. That's dangerous because you still have the Widowmaker. I bet I killed their soldier. Thank you. I'm sitting in this amp, but there's no one to amp. <laughs> Trust me, they'll all be here at once, and then you'll wish that you had amp. I, I will be very happy to have the amp, yeah. They just dropped their, uh... Lucio ult, yeah. That's the one. They dropped the beat. <laughs> side are they going to come from? Which side? Oh. And I'm dead. I, I don't understand why that doesn't work for me when I play Roadhog. I grab Bastion, pull him in and shoot him and hit him and he's still got half his health. Like, what? What do I have to do? They lowered Roadhog's damage for just me, apparently. Everybody else still does massive Roadhog damage. <laughs> the world ended a few times. <laughs> the first, in 3.5, the world ended uh, technically, um, which is how we ended up in 4th edition. I had been absent for a session. One session. It was the only session in like the entire campaign that I missed. 
And while I was gone, one of the other players decided, I'm going to see if I can get everybody killed and then run away from here. Because I want to try being evil. He had been a neutral wizard of Bacab. <laughs> and then he met me and became evil. <laughs> Unfortunately, he wasn't as, um... Subtle. Yeah. But he didn't think out his his moves as much either. You know, not as um, shrewd. Maybe that's you can say one. smart. You can say smart if you want. <laughs> <It wasn't> smart. <laughs> um, and so what he did was he purposefully mistranslated something that the others couldn't read. Only he could read it. Uh, and told them it said to do a certain thing, which it didn't say to do, but he knew if they did it, it would spring a trap that they would all get stuck in and die. And then he figured he would escape by using, like, a teleportation spell of some kind. Uh, and then something occurred where he almost died, and he had to use his spell to save himself, <laughs> so he didn't have it to escape with later, and the trap was already tripped. <laughs> And so I poof in, because in this session we poof in and out, and the GM looks around at the gathered people around the table and says, Okay, you have 30 seconds to explain to Tristan's character why you're all going to die, and then everyone's going to roll initiative. <laughs> and there was nothing but finger pointing. No one could explain why they were going to die. They're just like, it's so and so's fault. It's his fault. No, it's his fault. If we hadn't had to stop and rest, we would have been fine. If he hadn't, like, pushed that button, it would have been fine. <laughs> and we were dealing at the time with an elder god based on um, the supercomputer from System Shock. So it would kill people and then infuse their body with literally cybernetics and bring them back as a zombie. And so there were all these cyber zombies everywhere in this in in this very much medieval world. We're all standing around with our swords and bows going, What the fuck are these things? How how are there people with metal in their bodies? And so I had just, we were high, high level at that point. We were like 14th or 16th level at the time. And so that had allowed me to multi-class like a beast because 3-5's multi-classing system was as broken as it gets. And I read through the, the system like 14 times to make sure I was doing it right. Um, so I had just finished multi-classing into Shadow Dancer, which at first level lets you hide in plain sight. And having both Rogue level 3 and Barbarian um, level 2, I think it was, I got the stacked dodge to get uncanny dodge. If you get dodge from two different sources, it stacks together and becomes uncanny dodge. Or if you get uncanny dodge, it stacks together and becomes improved uncanny dodge. Either whatever it's called. Yeah, it's uncanny dodge, improved uncanny dodge. Okay, so it's un improved uncanny dodge is what I had, which makes it so... Um, uncanny dodge makes it so that if you if you make the save, uh, you take um, let me think about this. I'm trying to remember because they stack really. Uncanny dodge makes it so that on a save for half, even if that's you evasion. Is it evasion? Un uncanny dodge is he can't be flanked. Oh, then I'm thinking of evasion and improved evasion. That's why I thought it was dodge, because dodge and evasion mean the same thing. I don't think... Did evasion... If you got evasion from two sources, it gave you improved evasion? Because mm. improved evasion was, like, really good. Yes. But regular evasion was less good. Yes. And in 3-5, yes. If you got it from two sources, it became improved evasion. And I couldn't get my shift up. God damn it. I was trying to kill their stupid healer. Um, so, with improved evasion, on a failed save, you take half damage, and on a made save, you take no damage. And so, they started 
initiative and effectively ten clerics run in the room and drop each dr drop flame strike on us. So ten flame strikes, which are uh, fucking reflex save against like a hundred, like sixty damage or something like that. And I am dead. Don't do that. I I got hacked and then I got stunned. Don't, it it don't, wouldn't have happened if I hadn't that. gotten stunned. The true enemy of humanity is disordered. And so all these flame strikes come in, and like even the people who on the crew who are really decent reflex saves are saving for half, and half of ten attacks is still way more than they have in total HP. So everyone is dying. Some quickly, some more quickly. <laughs> And I am making my saves left and right, and I end up taking... I, I make every single save, and I take no damage. And then I hide in plain sight. And everyone on the entire party dies, except for me, my character. And I'm hacked again. Apparently, when you're hacked, you lose your shield. Yes. Didn't know that. Damn this Orissa shield. Yeah, actually, you've got nowhere to go. Okay, shield generators up. Everyone melts and dies. <laughs> I'm the only one who survives and makes it out. But the thing was that because we never made it to the place where we were supposed to channel the power of the world, the world technically ended as I escaped from the place. And, like, my character looks up and all of a sudden everything about him is different. All of his gear and all of his powers and abilities, they're all different. As we flipped into 4th edition, and his class changed, and Blackguard didn't really exist anymore. At least, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the rogue paladin that, uh, that I had wanted to play. So I switched him over to being an Avenger. Yay. I did not die once. I did. But I think I only died once. Look, it's Cadenza. Maria Cadenza. Yep. It's Maria kinda... Cadenza of the Eve. Yeah. She's from, like... Apparently Cadenza... Austria? Or she's... Apparently Czech. She might be Czech. Apparently Cadenza is short for something, because I looked her up the other day, and her, her middle it's name is Cadenza of Nia. The Cadenza of Naya or something like that, yeah. I think she's... She's Czech. Wow, oh, it sounded Russian. So that was an interesting way to end the three five. The world was recreated, and uh, amazingly, still has the same. She's problem. Yugoslavian. You were wrong. That was close. I know, <laughs> but you are still wrong. Two deaths. I had two deaths. Where's my second death? Ah, I don't get to know. I don't know things, Sam. So. That was a good one. Um, anything fun in Shadowrun that you can think of? I mean, there's the time that they invaded the warehouse and there was just the old man there and they ruined his life. There was the time we ruined that guy's life. That was fun. <laughs> what did you do to the old man? No, no, I didn't do anything to the old man. I wasn't around for the old man. But they, they like... He was he was framed for something, I think. Yeah. Cause they went um, the, one, the one who could just, like, see all the magic, but couldn't do anything else. Because he had, like, all of his points in uh, whatever that is. That's um, sense. 
But then there was the time that we jumped a dude after he left work. Um, waltzed in as him, stole the plans for what he was working on, sold them to a friend of his. <laughs> he stole his phone! And... Called up somebody who works for another company, wore the guy's face, and met him in public to sell him the, the fucking documents. Yeah. <laughs> that was horrible! We, we ruined, like, three people's lives? I think Because so. one, I think his wife thought that he was cheating on her yeah um after the phone call that they had mm-hmm. um and then the and friend... then he was framed for it because he very clearly walked in and grabbed sold. the stuff and yeah. walked out yeah and, and then there was the the dude that he sold it to yeah. i think we tanked a company too <laughs> it, was, it was a bad situation you guys should not be allowed to shadow run anymore no we shouldn't be allowed to use magic in shadow run <laughs> magic is really op if the enemy isn't using equivalent magic yep which they should be, but some don't. Yeah, that was fun. That was Tegan's first session. I also remember the time you guys went to PAX Prime. I wasn't there for that. Oh, you weren't? Cause Sarah yeah, was, was playing a character that was, that was a super. That, wasn't like, that when Sarah's brother like murdered everyone for the yeah. sake of murder? Yeah, it was. Um, it was really awkward. Okay, I'm dead because I threw my healing not at my own feet. So I basically just gave that Sombra kill. Where where was everyone else? I was dead, and I'm running back with my... Okay, well, I'm dead. Because apparently they had a uh, Symmetra that I wasn't told about. Yeah, Shadowrun gets a little ridiculous a little fast. I mean, the, the, the players are supposed to be relatively unstoppable badasses um, against NPCs who are not always quite prepared, just because they are the ultra-mercs in uh, a futuristic society. Fuck that noise. she kill you? Yeah, you were just a second too late. I trot my way through her and I'm going to die. Don't do that. Oh, it's okay. Now we can have two bastions. And I'm asleep. And I'm poisoned and can't heal. Come on, man! Get away from me! Uh, I like Shadowrun. You're, Run. you're doing a bad job of jumping on top you of the thing. You can't jump on these things from behind! You cannot! I mean, maybe you can't. Oh yeah, let's see you do it. Well, I didn't say I can. Fuck you. <laughs> but, uh... Shadowrun is another game I really enjoy running, because it's very easy uh, to run as long as everybody already has a character. <laughs> and I'm frozen. Where is this May? She's dead now. Push me. 
Go, go. Oh, you stopped pushing me. It's uh, my fault. An enemy ran up and stopped the thing from moving. Um, the shadow runs um, set in 2070, and it's a uh, super cyberpunk adventure. <laughs> what? You're like this is being pushed by the thing. Yes. The rest of the team is doing a bad job of protecting me. And then I also enjoyed the um, the running gag of my magician and the um, Dead weight. Johnson, who was eventually going to uh, hire people to kill him because of gambling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you always, every time. <laughs> Oh, uh, we're in this place? I'm gonna go gamble and play Mahjong. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play Mahjong, and I'm just gonna beat this guy. <laughs> Every time. Made him so sad. <laughs> he lost all his money to you. That's why eventually he was gonna hire people to kill me. <laughs> Probably. I mean, Noah played in my game so long that I did eventually have a session that was entirely about somebody hiring assassins to kill him. Yeah, I remember that. That was the one with Neck Gun Guy. Yeah, Neck Gun Guy. <laughs> we pushed him into the water and he totally didn't get eaten by sharks or anything like that. Probably not. <laughs> but it also is the one with fucking Ammunition Guy that you set on fire. Oh, yeah, he was dead at the time. <laughs> yeah, that you keep telling well, he, yourself. He was that. unconscious. He, he was, was not dead. He was unconscious and you set him on fire and then all his ammo went off. That's because and... we didn't understand how Ignite happened and then my magician stopped using that spell. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's horrifying. I, I can take you through making a shadow runner anytime you want, dude. Just be aware that it's one of the most grueling and tedious character creations ever. But once you've done it, you never have to do it again unless you want to subject yourself to that pain. You should be a magician. You should don't. Yeah. It's fun. Just... Improved invisibility and silence on yourself. Yeah, and you know what? I've gotten and then smarter. No too. one can see or hear you. Yeah, unless they have spirits. Yeah, but you're also the only thing that's effective against fighting spirits, anyway. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the thing that magic doesn't have. Like, like it's like to properly beat a magician, you throw spirits at them. But magicians are the only thing that's actually effective against spirits. True, but. Spirits do a lot of physical attacking, and they have the ability to deal stun damage, too, which makes it a lot harder for uh, magicians to cast spells. Yeah. And don't forget and about... It's true, the proper way to fight a, a spirit is with a monofilament whip. I was gonna say, don't forget about the monofilament whip. Because which is... that just, just kills, like, everything. Yeah. The monofilament great. <laughs> the monofilament whip is bullshit. <laughs> It's like I, think I took six ranks in it. <laughs> what is it? It was like no, I took five because I took six in surgery. It was, was like a twelve physical minus half AP or something. It was uh, yeah, twelve physical minus eight AP. Put up a shield. Come on. I, I was dead at the time. Not you. You're wrestling with me. It's okay. I'm on. Oh, I got her. Yeah, the doctor was a fun guy. I killed a lot of their guys who are most effective at... Fuck. I was gonna say, we should take the point easily now, and then I see us losing capture. No, no. And I just watched our tracer fly off the edge. I got stunned while healing. And died. With every death comes honor. With honor, redemption. 
Shadowrun. I like to play this, uh, I, I, I do something a little interesting. Shadowrun is a world where uh, everything is run by mega corporations and... Blade Runner. It is Blade Runner. It's the world of Blade Runner. It is the world of Blade Runner. Okay, that's better. Um, right. Got all these cooperation. What? What? I just was launching my ult as Hanzo and died. Because I got shot from behind, so I jumped off the roof I was on, and in mid-air I got punched by a, a Doomfist. And I'm dead! The same motherfucker! I haven't run Shadow Run in a long time, sadly. I just haven't had players for it. Of course. Meteor strike lands on my fucking head. Justice ain't gonna dispense it. I like to play a street samurai sniper who is actually still employed by Renraku and runs jobs on the side. Come on! Come on! Fucking kidding me. He runs the jobs on the side for the extra money and so that if anybody ever hires a group to run against Renraku, he can be there uh, to get things done cleanly. Because he is a captain of one of the Red Samurai squads. And so he uh, has a lot of people under his command. And he doesn't want Shadowrunners killing them. So he's got a very strict non-lethal policy. He's a sniper, but he uses only non-lethal bullets in his gun. He carries eight PDS rounds. For when they bring out vehicles and mecha drones and things, but otherwise he's always using um, stick and shocks and gel rounds. He doesn't carry regular ammo for the most part. Like, he does carry regular ammo, but it's not really something he ever uses.
Damn it. No, I hit Q! Come on! My alt came up and I saw the, the Reaper right next to me. I'm like, okay, do it, do it, do it, do it! And he didn't do it. He fucking just died. Physical adapts are good ones. I don't find physical adapts at all. They're just magically powered street samurai. <laughs> Noah's character was a physical adapt too in the earlier. We were starting third edition of Shadowrun and we were focused into dodging bullets. We made a specialty out of it. See. I got their hands away from the point. And I drew their orb, who was about to set up a turret on the point. That's a good start. Now to finish it. I've also played Exalted. Exalted was an interesting game. I, I like I love Exalted, but it's it's really you need people who are very sure of who their character is in order to have a good Exalted game. Because Exalted is so completely character driven. Which is why you can't play it. It's it's really hard to find a group that that can that can deal with it. It's it's a very um, challenging game to play, um, but it's very rewarding if you've got a dedicated group. Come on! Are you kidding me? They fucking get a Symmetra and she immediately comes after me! Hey, she got me first. Yeah, but then I fucking blasted her and laid a trap on the ground and started shooting grenades at her and she was able to block most of the grenades with her shield, even though I was trying to bounce them around the shield. We gotta help with that. Where are you? Don't be dead. No. There we go. I'm gonna stay near you. Hey, Lafara. Do they? Do you know where she is? I know where she is, because she tried to bump me into the thing. Got her. Nice. Enemy <laughs> oh, no, that was the Reaper. Damn it, I have to reload. Where did that tracer go? Oh, I gave you a shield just in time. Are you alive? No. Shit. There's nobody else around to try and attack the Pyra. Come on. Wake up. No. How? I maneuvered so that he couldn't push me in. I 
is doing that lag thing again. And I'm dead. Of course. Come on. Yes. Nice. That should probably be it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good place to call it. <laughs> we got all nine of our wins and a shit ton of levels. Yes. Singing lesbians fight aliens and an ancient priestess who wants to destroy the moon and bang God. <laughs> Not entirely inaccurate. Semper G. Singing lesbians fight other singing lesbians and an insane doctor with delusions of grandeur. Absolutely accurate. Inferior GX. Singing lesbians fight a tiny alchemist with daddy issues. Also accurate. But don't forget about her singing lesbian robots. Uh, look at the second thing I sent you. <laughs> GX singing lesbians fight the trans Illuminati who are also alchemists and want to fight God. <laughs> AGX is gonna be amazing. These are all one, so I'm guessing this is what you need. If I may just add one thing to your synopsis of GS and her autonomous dolls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, can't forget those things. You're right, the Tiny Alchemist also plays with deadly murder dolls. <laughs> Take the tiara, turn it into an energy disc, and say, Moon Tiara Magic. She will then throw the tiara to destroy whoever she throws it at. <laughs> the victim will dissolve into dust, which looks unique in each episode. <laughs> on two occasions, she combines the attack with Sailor Mars' as Mars Fire Ignite, and on one occasion, she combines it with Mars Fire Ignite and Mercury's Mercury Bubble Blast. Tiara can also be used to trap an enemy by turning into an energy ring or even attaching it to an enemy's head and electrocuting them. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey, Sailor Moon is dark. Yeah, seriously, dude. I'm getting the feeling that the English... Okay, I know why I was confused. In oh. Japanese, she says Moon Tiara action. Ah, hmm. I was gonna say, I'm getting the feeling that the English dub didn't do it justice, which is the only thing I ever saw. Hey, the English dub had so many fun moments. It was very silly. Yes, <laughs> I, I think that it, I, I get the feeling it told a slightly different story from the original Japanese. I mean, it did make Uranus and Neptune cousins, well, which was I, slightly different. Very <laughs> different. But I mean, even my 14-year-old self could see through that. Yeah, anything directed by Ukuhara, you could just, you just, you just know. There's going to be a lesbian couple. Or all of them. All of them lesbian couples. I think even in Penguin Drum, one of the, the like side characters was was in a relationship. So yeah. Right. Ev everything that. that he has done. Well, thank you, anybody who watches the stream, including Dude. We're going to offline now because it is late and sleep is good. So good night. Night. Where's my